Prophecy is positive. Number four, the voice of the Lord's practical. The vo- Y'all like these stories? I love these stories. They just remind me how much I love this. The voice of the Lord's practical. First Samuel 15, 22, it says, So Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed or to hearken than the fat of rams. In other words, God will give you practical steps. God will tell you things either through your own personal prayer life, through your study of the scripture, or at times when somebody may minister to you or times of, of preaching or whatever. God speaks in a lot of different ways. And his voice is practical. God can drop something down into your heart to help you know what is your next step. God will give you a key to your own breakthrough. God will help you know how it is that he wants to move you forward. Now, I asked permission that if I could share this today, but um, we have a, a lady in our church, um, Lisa Burwell, and she actually runs a local magazine. Prior to that, she actually ran one of the most successful marketing firms called Cornerstone Marketing, one of the most successful marketing firms in the entire panhandle of Florida. But in 2007 and 2008, when the economic downturn hit, it devastated this area. I mean, I think that at one point we figured that 60 to 70 percent of our church lost their jobs. How many of you were around then and remember those days, okay? It was pretty, pretty devastating. So she went from running one of the most successful marketing firms in the panhandle, being winning all kinds of marketing awards, to suddenly there's no marketing dollars, there's, no, there's nothing available for her to even keep the doors open. And so she was praying one day, and she said, you know, Lord, I've given you my business, and here's the problem. I don't have money to keep the lights on. I don't have the money to pay my employees. I need to know what to do, Lord. Do I just need to to close down my business? Lord, I just need to know what to do. And she heard the voice of the Lord speak to her. Isn't it interesting that if we ask and then listen, he will speak to us. And the Lord spoke to her, and this is what she heard him say. She heard the Lord say to her, I want you to start a magazine, and I want you to name it The. And she said, when she was telling us this, she said, I said to the Lord, "Um, Lord, maybe you didn't really understand my problem here, okay? Um, I have no money, okay? I have no ability to keep going with my business. I have no money. And I don't know anything about magazines, doing a magazine. This certainly isn't the time to do something new. And so she stopped and she listened again and she heard the Lord say again, start a magazine and name it V. She's like, Well, okay, I guess I'll learn about starting a magazine. But then she was talking to the Lord, and as she told us the story, she said, "Um, but Lord, I don't understand why I need to name it V. So she went and she got a dictionary, and she started paging through the dictionary, looking up V words. Victory, valiant, virtuous, lots of good V words. But then she found this little three-letter word, V-I-E, pronounced V, which in French means life. God was prophesying life into her dying business. And so that was the birth of V Magazine, which has been featured on the billboard in Times Square in New York. It's the people and places of the Emerald Coast. Do you guys remember what year that was? 2008, I think, yeah, I think that's about right, 2008, and all this time now, it is a premier magazine from our area. Can we give the Lord a hand that he gives us words that give us the practical ability to move forward, amen? Number, whatever, number six, I only have seven of these, the voice of the Lord has a protocol. Oh, wait, number five, sorry, go back to five, because this is an important one. The voice of the Lord's progressive, actually, I'm going to give you three words, It's progressive, it's partial, and it's conditional. In other words, just because you get a prophecy that God's going to use you in mighty ministry or God's going to bless you in your business or God's going to do such and such in your family doesn't mean it automatically happens. See, we have to obey the voice of the Lord. 
We've got to listen to his voice. We've got to, we've got to enter into a place where uh, we understand that 1 Corinthians 13, 9 says, we know in part, we prophesy in part. God's not necessarily going to give you all the parts. I told you the big prophecy that God gave me at the age of 16, but guess what? There were a lot of little decisions we had to make every step along the way that we had to do just by listening to the voice of God and knowing what his timing and his purpose were. It's progressive. God will unveil and, and, and purposely unveil his plan to us. Think about the prophetic word that Abraham got when he's living in the Ur, Ur of Chaldees. God said, get up out of the land of your fathers, go to a land that I will show you, walk and look. That was his whole prophecy. God did not tell him which direction to walk. God did not tell him how long to walk. God did not tell him what he was looking for when he walked. Do you realize that Abraham actually walked right past the promised land and he settled in a town called Haran for 25 years? And 25 years later, God said to Abram, um, 25 years ago, you missed it just a little bit. Pack everything up and I'm going to get you to the right place. How many are glad that God's going to get us to the right place, okay? So, so don't, don't think that prophecy is going to be spelling everything out. You don't need a word from the Lord. When you get up in the morning and you read your Bible, you don't need a word that says, God, what color should I wear today? That's weird, okay? Don't, don't be weird. Look at your neighbor and say, don't be weird, okay? We're not going to be weird with this, but we are going to hear the voice of God. All right? It's progressive. It's partial. God's voice um, sometimes he will not give you the details you're looking for, but you've got to walk it out by faith. Number six, the voice of the Lord has a protocol. In other words, if you are ministering to other people, if you have an ability to hear the voice of the Lord, you should never do it for selfish gain. The Lord spoke to me, you're supposed to give me money. The Lord spoke to me, you're supposed to marry me. Don't do it. Look at your neighbor and say, don't do it. It's not used to threaten or to intimidate or to control. That is, that is um, being pathetic instead of prophetic, okay? All right, so number seven, the voice of the Lord is powerful. We're going to wrap up here. The voice of the Lord is powerful. Probably my favorite scripture, two scriptures on the voice of the Lord, is Isaiah 30, 31 says, the voice of the Lord will shatter the enemy. How many of you know at least one thing that God has spoken to you? At least one thing, just one. If your hand isn't up, you need to read your Bible more. Because <laughs> it's full of promises, okay? All right. We, we are encouraged in 1 Timothy chapter 118 to war warfare by the prophecies that have gone before us. When we do that, it says the voice of the Lord will shatter the enemy. It, can, it brings breakthrough. Psalms 29, verse 4. Well, the entire chapter is all about the voice of the Lord. But Psalms 29, verse 4 says, the voice of the Lord is powerful. And that word powerful is the word koach in Hebrew. And it literally means the voice of the Lord is a force that breaks through immovable objects. Come on, the voice of the Lord is a breaker. The voice of the Lord is a force. The voice of the Lord brings might and power and strength and ability. The voice of the Lord, and we can see all the things that happen with the voice of the Lord. It'll shake things. It'll break things. It'll break things open. It'll break you through. And I believe that each and every one of us need to step in to a greater manifestation of the voice of the Lord.